Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to focus our attention today on the parable of the prodigal son. Now, uh, all over Christendom tomorrow, uh, across many different denominations, in fact, preachers will climb into their pulpits uh, and they will seek to offer uh, something on this parable or they will avoid it. Uh, The only reason for really avoiding it is just that we always preach on it. And those who do preach on it are going to preach on one of three things. They will uh, preach on the son, the prodigal son, the one who has consumed and wasted everything that his father has given them. Or they will preach on the brother who is faithful and stays home, gets angry when his brother returns. Or they will preach on the father's love who welcomes the prodigal son home and then has to deal with the conflict in the family. Today, I want to focus on the pigs. <laughs> Our prodigal son has misspent everything that he's received. He's ended up feeding another man's pigs while he goes hungry. Now, if you were to go online and enter into the search engine there, you will find, if you put prodigal son, there will come a lot of images about him sitting sadly, sleeping with the pigs. There are even icons of the prodigal son with the pigs, yet nobody seems to pay any attention to the noble pigs. Now, what do we know about pigs? Pigs are fastidious animals, believe it or not. They don't sweat. They're smarter than your dog. They are directionally minded, have an excellent recall of memory, they dream, and mother pigs even sing to their babies. Martin Luther, the great reformer, used the image of pigs, unfortunately, to call out drunks and those who hated children. Arthur Bernard Shaw once said, I learned long ago never to wrestle with a pig. You get dirty, and besides, the pig likes it. And then there is Jesus who used the pigs in today's parable as a sign of sin. Here is the prodigal son wrestling with the happy pigs in the mud, feeding them, being sung to at night by the mama pigs, and learning hygiene. Now remember, the pigs have a good sense of direction, and so I would suggest in this unorthodox view of this parable, that the prodigal learns many things about himself while he's with the pigs. Does he not? Open the Scripture again and look at it. It's only with the pigs that he figures life out, right? The prodigal learns about himself, his life, his father. He considers his father's table. And I am suggesting here at St. Martin's in this breaking new view of the parable, that the pigsty is a metaphor for the church. Now hold on with me before you discard my sense of things. Like the pigs, we humans are clean, we have a good sense of direction, and we are smarter than our dogs sometimes. If we're honest, we are sinful, and we like wrestling in the mud of discontent Sadness turned to anger, and while we have good qualities like singing to our children, we can be piggish, hard-headed, drunken, and we may even just want what we want. Yet also like pigs in this story, we are supposed to welcome the prodigal son of us. As the pigs, you don't hear the pigs casting them out. They're kind of like, come in, rest a while. And that's what the church does. It welcomes in the prodigal sons and daughters 
in this world, into our literal church and pigsties. It, it isn't that becoming a full part of the church is reaching the high point of one's spiritual journey, but rather it is becoming a member of a community, a religious community such as the Christian community that owns and is honest about its sinfulness and lowliness, then our individual brokenness, we discover, is in need of something, just like the prodigal son. We learn together in the mud and muck of this world that when we gather, we need a little help from our Lord Jesus. Our individual sinfulness needs the cross. Think about it. You don't get to the Father's embrace until you understand what's missing in the world and in your life. It is in the life of Christian community in the pigsty with all the other sinners, me, you, just like the prodigal son that we begin to understand, you and I are powerless over sin. And the truth is our lives are unmanageable. As much as we would like to fight that sin, we come up against the barrier every day. We do, as Paul says, the things I do not wish to do. We come to believe that God in this place, we come to believe that God is, is the one who can restore us. And that we, like today in confirmation or in days of baptism, we learn that we should turn our will and our lives over to God and Christ Jesus. We should understand the importance of confession and forgiveness. And I would suggest we allow Christ's cross to remove our defects of character and shortcomings, recognizing we cannot do it alone, but need the whole community and God's special grace in which to live and move and have our being. We are willing to make amends with our enemies. That's one of the things we learn in Christian community to say, I'm sorry, you'll hear in the confirmation today to turn and return to the Lord, apologizing to those whom we've harmed. We are to learn to pray and meditate to improve our conscious contact with God. After all, is that not what the prodigal son does? He sits there quietly and the Spirit comes to him and teaches him of what is missing in his life. And having a spiritual awakening we carry the message to others. Now, you all may say, that sounds a lot like Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, that's because AA is rooted in Christianity. This rule of life is what we learn in the sty and in the church, amongst the other fastidious and noble pigs, you and me, amongst all the other prodigal sons and daughters, which is also you and me. As here we learn what it means to be a sinner as we pay special attention, especially in Lent. And it's here that we learn what it will mean to come home one day. What it will mean to see our Father's face and to be embraced by the eternal Father who loves us. What of the brother who stays home? Well, if you are someone who likes to count the sins of others, never spending time with the pigs, it's gonna be hard at the pearly gates for you to understand why God is so happy when the rest of us show up. For only those who understand their need of salvation and have spent time in a pigsty can understand how glorious is the grace of our Father's embrace. So I'll leave you with a, a, a little song entitled, Coming Home. I've wandered far away from God and now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've trod. I'm tired of sin and strain. Lord, I'll trust thy love Believe thy word, my soul is sick, my heart is sore. The strength renew, my hope restore. My only hope, my only plea that Jesus died and died for me. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home. 
never more to roam. So open wide thy arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.